the easy answer is it's massive. Uh, the burden is huge. The, the numbers of sudden cardiac death in Europe and the US are in the hundreds of thousands. And the reasons behind people having sudden cardiac death are different. They differ in the young versus the old. The young have channelopathies, have things like myocarditis, maybe even things like substance abuse. The older population has things like coronary artery disease. But in total, combined, we're talking hundreds of thousands of people every year that die suddenly. That's a pretty sensitive question. As you know, it's, it's an intense topic of debate. There's quite a difference between the ESC position, for example, and the American Heart position. The ESC guidelines recommending screening in professional athletes. The AHA guidelines do not support the view. I guess in theory, my answer would be yes, of course. Of course, we should screen. Next question is, of course, how are we going to screen? And the answer there is much more complicated. If you look at, for example, the Italian data, the Italians have shown quite nice mortality reductions with their screening programs, but our other people are having a very hard time replicating their results. So although, yes, fundamentally, I do think screening should be implemented, I do fear we're not at the stage yet where we can say, this is the way we're going to do it. We're not perfect, for example, with ECG screening. So currently, we have the high-risk population. It's been well studied. We have data from the MUS, the MEDIT, the MEDIT 2, the AVID, the CASH studies, all those studies showing that we can prevent sudden death in the high-risk populations by giving them an ICD. Now, the unresolved issue, the major challenge, is the other population, the population with apparently normal hearts. And the issue is, it's where all the events are. The, the, Percentage-wise, few events happen, but in total, it's such a large population, that's where all the sudden deaths happen. And that's where we struggle much harder. Currently, we're at the stage where we can say, probably the best bet are things like lifestyle modification. But also, as you'll see in the new guidelines, there's very interesting, intuitively simple concepts, such as teaching CPR in the general public. Scandinavian countries have, have had great results by implementing a CPR training for the general public, improving their outcome for out-of-hospital arrest. So while we're waiting for good solid screening mechanisms to identify high-risk persons in the normal uh, population, the best bet so far might be things like uh, uh, teaching public CPR. So other than the things we have, there are of course a few promising technological developments to do more for sudden cardiac death. Things like the subcutaneous ICD, which might overcome some of the challenges of the traditional ICD in, in uh, young patients, but also different things. For example, new mechanisms are being discovered for old drugs. Mechanisms, for example, where flecainide can treat a patient with CPVT through formerly unknown mechanisms. Or things even like ablation, currently clearly at the unproven stage, but currently also clearly a topic of high interest of research because it has the potential of avoiding ventricular arrhythmias in certain disease states, in certain high-risk profiles. And even a little bit more down the line, there's intense interest in genetic screening. We're really at the infancy of genetic screening, but more and more people are starting to realize the complexity of the issue and more and more people are joining forces to really analyze massive data sets to try and identify clusters of genes of small mutations and try to identify people at higher risk for sudden cardiac death. The issue is the interactions, the complexities are massive. I don't think we'll have an answer in 2015 and to be honest with you, I don't think we'll have it in 2016 either, but I do think it's one of the most promising avenues of research.